arrived. A little bit of a overcast sky. Got a group in front of us launching right now. Looking in ready to go. Parking lot is uh, oh, about seven cars in there. One car has got a flat tire. Could probably fit a couple trailers if we could. They got a little outhouse back there. Holland's the clear pond. We just launched and we're gonna go up the lake a bit. We're just leaving the access point. Group ahead of us. Made the first portage, it's one hundred ninety one meters over to Pollywog Lake. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the shrubbery. It'll get you. Well, this will be the first time just me and Adam have been done a trip before. We're gonna have a good time. Hey, did you find some water? So we're on the whole portage and there's a split in the road. So let's go to the left and see what this goes to. All right, so the canoe carry over to the whole pond. When you come from Pollywog Pond, you just go up the hill a little bit to the road follow that road it's a little small dirt road it will then take you to the bigger road right here and the portage is straight ahead would be nice if they had a little sign just to tell people where to go right off the bat So this is a little over, oh, about 1,200 meters. Yeah, this is what it's like under a canoe. You get sheltered from the rain. All right, so what did we weigh your pack in today, Adam? 32 pounds, plus we added the steak into your bag. That's about two and a half pounds. So Adam's got about 34 pound pack. My pack weighed in at what, 53? Yeah. So our goal is to go for three nights, four days. I've never been out here this neck of the woods before. I guess if we came, I could have brought my golf clubs. Could be playing a little golf out here. Sand traps, green. So here's the parking lot for Whole Pond. How was that little 1,200-meter uh, portage? Long and painful. Yeah, you had a heavier pack than you're used to. Yeah. As did I. But we made it. Once, no stopping. Other than look at the golf course. So here it is. Whole pond. Let's see, we've got some, a couple of loons there off to the left.
Almost the other side of the whole pond here. We've got a railroad track up here, and this is also the marker boundary for the St. Regis, St. Regis Canoe Wilderness Area. So the whole pond portage over to Turtle Pond goes over a railroad track. It's just a little up and down. The wind is pretty strong. Kind of hard to manage just one-handed. Turtle Pond. There's a little waterfall over there from the uh, uh, drain thing. On the other lake, there's a drain. Oh, yeah. Good thing we didn't go through that, huh, Adam? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Switch out. Yeah, I read a line somewhere and somebody said you could probably carry it through that. And I'm just like, I don't think so. And yeah, definitely not. Don't try that at home, folks. Well, we've made it to Turtle Pond. Adam's doing all the work up here in the front of the paddle, uh, canoe, paddling everything. There's a couple of campsites on this lake. Sun is trying to come through a little bit. So in anticipation, I have put my sunglasses back on. over a little beaver dam or something here where it just gets really shallow here. step out and go to your left over here. I figure people probably had a few slang words back there going with that little narrow gut. And that's why they called this pond coming up here, Slang Pond. A little narrow still right here. I saw a yellow perch swimming in the water. Okay, stabilize it for me. Good. Good.
We're over at Long Pond. If you're from Long Island, you would say Long Pond. Long Pond. And we've been canoeing here. We haven't really seen anybody other than campers and that first canoeist that we and saw. And we've got some canoeers heading our way right now. But a little bit of wind here in our face, not much. But we're going to go around that bend right out there and then try to find a site. Well, Long Pond, we're right into the wind on Long Pond here. We're both having a hard time. Well, not a hard time. We're having a paddle both on the right to keep the canoe straight. Hello. We are here at um, Long Pond. What site number do we take? Uh, seven. Number seven. Because number 11. Number 13. Number 13 didn't work. Numbers five was too windy. Got a very small fire pit. No logs to sit on, but that's why we brought chairs. Uh, we got the meat, the frosting over there. It's a very small site. And that's about it. That's big. Delicious. Yep. Got some hot coals under there. We got a tarp set up over there. Tent over there. New down there. View the lake here. Nice little area to get up. And a canoe razor. Pretty nice here. St. Regis Canoe Wilderness. It's waterproof, second edition by Paddle Sports Press or it's online or go to your favorite uh, canoe store. Personally, I like Adirondacks Lakes and Trails. Uh, Jason, the owner, is just fantastic. He has been awesome uh, corresponding with me through email, phone call, texting. He's always available. Definitely go check them out. They're right there in the middle of Saranac Lake. That's Adirondack Lakes and Trails. Moving on over here to the map. I got my official map holder over here. Adam, where are you at? <laughs> All right, so we started right here at Spider Creek Access. Uh, right there. We canoed up all the way up Fallensby Clear Pond, portaged over at the 191 portage to Pollywood Pond. Then we went across the uh, 1158 portage up the whole pond. There was a golf course on the right, kind of cool. I wanted to get my irons out. We went across Hole Pond into Turtle Pond, where we have now entered the St. Regis Canoe Wilderness. So we entered Turtle Pond, came all the way across to Slang Pond. Gets really, really uh, shallow right here, so you'll have to get out, be prepared. So I'd recommend you actually put your uh, water shoes on here at this portage, so that way you could walk through there. Slang Pond, 351 portage. We checked out this site. It was nice. It was okay. This site here was beautiful but we had so much wind coming up that we decided to switch over we checked out site six it was okay i just didn't feel comfortable at it and we went over to site seven site seven is very remote not many people are here but we are so we got a nice little fire going we had our dinner steak was fantastic as always somebody left us some nice firewood cut a couple pieces we brought our trusty saw adam and i went out and found some firewood we could have used aroni's help here because he is the master firewood gatherer uh, got a little campfire going. Adam, how was the steak? Delicious. Yeah? What was your favorite part of it? Um, the steak itself. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so, uh, got a nice little fire going. But Adam uh, did a little slip in the water down there with his Crocs on and his nice socks. And his one sock got pretty wet, so he's uh, roasting it over the fire. Trying to help dry it off. This is my secret dinner. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, we can't see it, pal. Morning, 
morning from camp. Had ourselves a little bit of rain last this morning. Uh, a little bit of thunder and lightning. Adam slept through it. Slept pretty well. Just packing up right now. I'm gonna cook up some breakfast. finished up with the camp, got all of our stuff, Everything packed up, go down to the canoe and get started. Day two, I believe that's Long Pond Mountain. We're just getting started. Our campsite is just back yonder. It's a good campsite. So we're coming up on the campsite that never was. We stopped at this campsite, really nice site, number five here. Beautiful, lots of open space to put your tents, beautiful fire pit. Uh, just would have been an all great site, but because of the wind coming from the south, it was gonna make it too cold, too windy. So we opted to go for more on the back side to seek uh, shelter from the wind. As you can see, we're now coming into some wind here. country ski trail. Adam and I just pulled over to check it out. And it goes right up yonder here. For those who want to come out to the lake and ski it in the middle of winter. And of course if we were feeling daring and, and full of muscle and strength we could walk this all the way back. What do you think? No, no thank you. Pulling the Aroni Tora, <clears throat> one handed canoe push down to the ground. <clears throat> so I don't know if you can see right behind me, there's a little, little section there where you can pull up there. That's where the ski trail is. Exploring, and I see there's a pond up here called Pink Pond. And there's a little river here to take you there. So we're gonna just try and check that out and see if it's something we can do or not. started on the long portage, the longest portage of the trip, down to Floodwood Pond. I think it's like 1381. Got a little bit of a hill to climb in the beginning. After that it should be flat.
So we're about halfway on the portage. This here is Anniversary Lake. You can put in right there if you want to canoe around about 500 meters, 500, but we're going to keep going. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. So we've made it to Floodwood Pond. And just, just short of Floodwood Pond here, just uh, up there is a road. And right there is the St. Regis Canoe Outfitters. We just went in and stopped in to say hi. And the guy working actually runs a Boy Scout camp over on Lowe's Pond. Uh, it's more of a high adventure style uh, uh, summer camp. So we'll have to look into that down the road for our troop. Anyways, he was very friendly, very nice. I don't know. Um, we're there's here. no number. Oh. There's no, this is site number, no number. Um, it's an island site. What we're lake are we on? Floodwood Lake. Floodwood. Oh. Trying to make the big piece and the small piece to stretch our fire a little bit longer. Make sense? Yeah. What we got so far? We've got our canoe here, tent there, fly up over there, fire pit. Down to the waterfront area. We've got what looks like to be maybe a home of some sort under this tree. Nice little sandy beach to put the canoe in. Nice view of the water on Floodwood Pond. So our truck today, we started out here at camp number seven at Long Pond. And we went all the way around. We actually went ahead over to Pink Pond and checked that out, that little narrow river there. That was pretty neat. Checked out the campsite and then headed back, went to the uh, portage right to here. And then came down to this campsite on this island right here. This island site is very wide open, lots of uh, places to put your tent, uh, good cover. Uh, firewood is a little scarce, so be prepared to get some from the neighboring island. We did notice that this island site right here, they had a picnic table on it. But the wind is kind of strong up there, so we want a little more shelter by coming here. So we're making a biscuit. Rudy and I did this once, it came out really good. We also did it the second time, it didn't come out so good because we used too much water. So make sure you use the appropriate amount of water. One quarter cup. For half of the biscuit, biscuit mix. Being cooked here on our fire here on the frying pan. As you can see, just put it right down there. Right next to our fire. Right up. What's the biscuit? It's close. No, it's still liquidy. Still liquidy. So I've made the biscuits. What do you think of them? They're delicious. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Especially when you're out camping. So we uh, modified a little bit. Since we don't have much flame, I went to, Adam went ahead and got the rack. Because let's get the rack. And so we put the rack down and we were able to cook it on, on the, the bottom as well. So it helps speed things up a little bit. Good call, Adam. You know, it wouldn't be a camping trip if we didn't have some rain. So we had some early this morning. Some thunder, lightning. We woke up to about four something in the morning. And now it's just started to have a good rain pour here. Nothing too crazy yet, but you can't see the mountain anymore in the distance. And the island's a little bit uh, blurry. You can see the drops hitting the water out there. 
couple of houses on this lake. Off to the left, a couple boat houses. I don't see any motorized boats. I did see a lot of uh, canoes and rowboats. And tomorrow's adventure will take us down yonder. So we got a canoe over there. I think there's a campsite down there that's been taken as well. We're hearing some other voices. It's a campsite across the way with a picnic table. Adam's made himself a cup of hot cocoa. Got a nice little fire going. Just about used up all the wood. It's not raining now, but I'm still sitting under here because I adjusted my chair because we're on a little hill and I lowered the back and, the, and had the front stay the same so that way it's more level now so I can sit here very comfortable, very comfortably. Good morning. We have awoken. Adam. Got up, had all of his stuff packed, we were just about ready to go, and then I got out of the tent, and then Adam already had hot water going for coffee, thank you. Adam had his kid version of coffee and had hot chocolate. The sun is out, we got blue sky today, so that's something we've seen a lot of on our trip so far. Heard some loons last night. I also heard some wolves crying. Kind of neat. About eight howls or so. So we're going to pack up and head out. Alright. We are heading out from our site. We'll go head back to our starting point. Birds are singing. So I'm just get the map ready. Okay, hold up. There we go. Good job. Alright, so this is going to be very important for you to keep eyes on rocks, okay? And you'll need to do maneuvers like the pry, the push away, the pull. Alright, let's read what this sign says here. I guess you can have a motor through here. for rocks in the front. Okay, 
So what you say is rock at 2 o'clock, rock at 1 o'clock. You say move to the left, move right. See this bridge is kind of coming off at the left here. See how it's raised up for the back end? Unless they did that on purpose. All right, so what do you see here? You see the logs, right? You see the ripple on the left? That means there's a log submerged right there. So we don't want to go left, we want to go a little bit to the right. So I got to steer, go around. So like when I get around this spot, you want to do a little bit of a Right, paddle hard to get over this log. Hard. Good job. We're on the uh, river here between Floodwood Pond and Little Square Pond. Um, there's some logs out here. There's a lot of them all along here. It's pretty shallow. Got a lot of grass on the side too. Grab hold of the wood, top, pull. Portage heading into Fallen's Beak Clear Pond. It's been a great adventure for Adam and myself. First time father son trip, just the two of us. Looking forward to many more. hiking trails throughout here. A lot of trails that were going in and out uh, from a lot of places where we were canoeing. In fact, 
We just crossed a trail, and I think we're about to cross a second trail. Nice. Alright, Adam and I, we just made it to uh, Fallensby Clear Pond. We, uh, had a great we had a great adventure and it was a good time. Did you enjoy yourself, Adam? Yeah. Would you do it again? Yeah. Would you go with your father again? Yeah. He wasn't too much of a pain in the woohoo? No. Okay, good. Um, but we just got to paddle a little bit of ways and we get to our car and then we're finished. Uh, great little journey we had. You can see the foot in here. Steep and pretty poor, but we didn't fall in the lake, so we're good. All right, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, so, the last leg that we did, we started here on Flubber Pond and we went down this little river to a little square pond down uh, Fish Creek, um, did a small portage, and went up to Fallensby Clear Pond, then to Spider Creek Access.